Welcome to Offsite Dirt, the podcast committed to uncovering all the insights of the offsite construction industry. Join us as we delve into the realm of offsite construction solutions, modern building methods, high performance construction, lean manufacturing, and beyond. Your experiences fuel our passion for the industry, fostering collaboration and driving business growth worldwide. So let's get down to the dirt. Hey everyone, how are you all? How's the new year started for you all? It's been amazing, amazing for me. So happy for 2024. And uh, here I am bringing another trailblazer female women leader on my show you know how you how excited I am always when I have women leaders from construction on my show and I'm so so happy I have a guest today who is already leading uh, the field of construction for many many years now and I'm so happy that I'm able to bring her expertise her wisdom in construction for you all and uh, hope you all like it make sure to stop by listen in while on you while you are on your way to office or way to drop off kids it's you know it's not going to be long and it's packed with nuggets so i'm super super excited to bring to you megan spivy i hope i said the name right so megan thank you so much for being on my show i really really sincerely appreciate it and uh, um i just have a personal passion to bring as many women leaders from construction on my show as i can tell your stories and uh, be able to inspire more women like us right in this industry we need more women leaders like us so thank you so much for being on my show I'm going to do a short, short introduction about Megan, but I will let her talk about her journey in details because no one else can do justice to that more than herself. Um, I was connected to Megan through my previous women leader guest, Lynn, and I'm so, so glad, Lynn, shout out to you for introducing more women leaders through my way. Um, Actually, Megan has a very diversified background. She has a background in retail, in multifamily, turnkey energy solutions, and she has done it both from the GC and the subcontractor side. So I'm super excited to learn more from her. Uh, she is a construction contract manager, and very recently she returned contracts specialist at Document Crunch. It's an AI-assisted contract intelligence platform Woohoo, AI. So we're going to talk about trends, uh, uh, tech trends uh, on our show. So we'll have some real life lessons to learn from her. She works on the industry solutions team to sustain the bridge from software tools to their meaningful application in the construction industry. She gets to use her love for contracts to serve the construction industry in the goals of helping everyone with those contracts they use and making lives a little easier. So that's a little bit about her. Go follow her on LinkedIn. Um, she has some amazing posts. I learn a lot, a great engagement. Uh, but Megan, over to you. I would love to learn a little more about you, your journey. How did you start in construction? Um, I know you have other folks also around you working in construction. So would love a little more, learn a little more about your journey. Yeah, thank you. That was a great introduction and definitely a shout out to Lynn because she is a great uh, resource for our industry uh, and women in construction in particular. Um, for my story, I did not plan to go into construction. I graduated during the recession of 2010 and the only places hiring were construction companies. And so I kind of fell into it thinking the first chance I get, I'm getting out of here. You know, who wants to work these like crazy hours? Like, you know, they, you know, accelerated schedules, these guys working the weekends and um, it just seemed not, you know, I, I felt a little insulated from it because I was in the office, but still it just didn't seem like an ideal lifestyle. Um, and then, of course, not only did I end up staying in construction, but I married someone in construction, too. So we're pretty deep in it uh, as far as our house. Um, my husband's a general contractor in the energy market, and he's actually, too, uh, funny enough, I learned to read contracts. I had a we had a project manager replaced in the field and 
I was supporting them uh, through some project administration. And I remember getting so frustrated. We had a new project manager. I was emailing him. I was getting calls from subs that, you know, where's my check? And I, I couldn't even set up the project because I didn't have all the information. And uh, this new project manager stopped responding to my emails and came in uh, the next day to my office and I was ready to give him a piece of my mind. And he went, uh, you can find everything you need in the contract. And I kind of pushed back and said, you know, that's your job, not mine. Give me all the information I need. And uh, he actually stopped and took the time to uh, open up the contract with me and we went through it. And I saw how I could get all the information I needed without him or any project managers. I could just go, go to that single source of truth, get all the project information I needed. And so I fell in love with contracts. And that was my husband, actually, the project manager who stopped responding to my emails. But um, it was a blessing because I learned how much information you can get from the contracts. And I started reading contracts just for fun. I didn't realize that anybody who wasn't an attorney could have a job with it, but I was just reading them. And over time, it kind of moved from using the contract on the project side, it kind of evolved into uh, looking at contracts before they're signed and learning how to identify risks. And that's kind of how I morphed into a contract specialist. I so I started doing the pre-signature reviews, but I have a real passion for helping project teams know what's in their contract after the there there's so much useful information. So I when I started posting on LinkedIn, my goal was to to get the get the contract out in front of more people and help them with compliance. Mm -hmm. And also recognize that, you know, there is, there is what things you can do before the contract is signed to maybe balance it a little bit more. And it's worth trying to protect your company, to protect your business. And that's something I'm really passionate about. There's so many smaller contractors, uh, either just getting into the business or purposely small and, uh, contracts are such a healthy part, uh, a, See, overseeing contracts is a healthy part of overseeing a business. It's not just project execution, which is important. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> but there's also so much information in the contracts uh, that can help streamline business, that can help protect your businesses from um, some regular risks that you uh, may encounter more often than not. So that's definitely something I'm passionate about is, is contracts and construction. Absolutely. So thank you so much for sharing that. And funny how you fell into this and then you just have your family all over in construction. So that's so super cool. Um, Megan, you just, uh, you highlight a great part about contracts being so essential and big or small, every company is dealing with it mm -hmm. and probably have a bigger pain point dealing with it. So over the course of our you know, interaction today, I would love to hone in. Uh, it actually, you know, is a good uh, segue for my next question, which was usually with all my guests, because I want to bring your real life expertise to my uh, listeners. I would like to um, kind of dive deep into, say, give me one project that one uh, uh, major you know, success or failure uh, or le lessons learned project that you had over, you know, this whole journey that you have had in construction and how did you like, you know, uh, if it was successful, what just was the, you know, uh, how did you uh, uh, spend your, like spend your magic there? Uh, and if it was something that you had challenges to, uh, to overcome, would love to learn all about it. So if you can dive deep into one of those projects or instances, uh, uh, will be great. Yeah, I, you know, I think it's interesting because there's so much uh, that we can do in terms of using lessons learned in the field to solve problems. And, you know, what can we do in the contract? Is there something we can do in the contract to either 
streamline those processes, make something more transparent or smooth out some rough edges by, by getting that, uh, those items addressed up front. And I think, uh, I maybe, maybe there, it doesn't sound as exciting, <laughs> you know, just saying, oh, I took feedback from the field and implemented it. But I think, you know, something really transformative for me uh, in terms of project information was before I knew that you could do things in, you know, way back in the day there, uh, we, our company lived through about three bad projects and how that really impacted me. And I think that is something that I, you know, now looking back can, so while it's, you know, the, the, the success stories aren't as fun. Oh, yeah. You can say, um, you know, hey, we're having this trouble, this issue in the field. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, looking back at our templates, how can we fix that? Mm -hmm. But also, I think there's a lot of lessons learned in the bad projects and having those. And if, if you've been in construction, either your a project has gone bad or it's going to go bad. Go bad. Absolutely. <laughs> there, you know, and it's we had a couple different instances, both on uh, as a subcontractor and a general contractor. And I think one of those projects went so bad. Uh, we spent a year uh, working with attorneys trying to get payment. And I think um, without, you know, that was very, be, because it, when you're in a small company, that, uh, and especially when your family is all at that same company, you're not as insulated from risk. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's something I really, uh, a big, pro you know, that project had a huge impact on me because it was impactful to the business we were working for. And I think that the lessons I learned, even though it was before I knew how to manage, uh, you know, before I knew how to change the contract before it was signed, um, that project in particular, living through a bad project that took a year of our lives trying to get it sorted with with a, a legal team and the, the customer we were working with, that is something I think that if you don't have a story like that, um, where you have a project that goes really bad, you know, you just have to look around at the landscape yep. and look at your scope. I think that's something to, you know, look at your scope. What are the big risks for your company um, besides the regular ones, the just the regular risks uh, out there, but also for your business too. And I think that is something, um, the, the failure that I worked through yeah. uh, or not failure because it, you know, you can't always, yeah, yeah, but, but it just like living through that the yep. experience of the project of of not getting paid and you know now in hindsight I could look back and go well you know looking for things like assurance of owner financing the right mm -hmm. to stop work um, so those kinds of um, mm -hmm. lessons learned from a project like that that's really um, some a, pro a project that really exemplifies I think why contracts are important but also the feedback of learning from other projects that have huge risks. Yep. You bring out two very important points. Like, you know what, um, uh, having a contract is important, but also having the right contract is important. Have you really covered your risk? How are you engaging with your customer? How are, because, you know, construction is like this. Like there are always projects where you have mm -hmm. delayed payments. Delayed payments is actually one of, the many big problems like labor shortages, right? Delayed payments is one of the pains that actually stops GCs from working with the best subs out there, mm -hmm. right? Because nobody wants to deal with delayed payments. Mm -hmm. uh, and in some cases, those delays are pretty massive, more than six months, right? So I'm not surprised by what you just uh, outlined here. So I'm just curious more just to, you know, dive a little deeper there. So 
you did all of that. So how did you overcome that? Did you redo the contract? And uh, like, how did things like sort out like towards the end of, of, on the project? Well, um, so that was a long time ago. So that's one of the reasons I got so into contracts. Um, mm -hmm. Why, you know, just a very um, impactful project for me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think it, it really informed how I approached. Um, it really informed how I approached when I started looking at contracts and uh, looking at terms to be changed before the contract is signed. So redlining contracts and just how important it is in terms of, you know, who I'm protecting the family, it's the families we're protecting. And I, I think, you know, something that has been, when I first got into the contract management side uh, with the terms, that, you know, working with the terms and conditions, one thing that when I first, first started, I worked with an outside construction attorney who was amazing. And he taught me a lot about contracts and construction contracts and kind of how, how they're used. And I think what was great about that, how that informed how we set up, uh, we, cause initially I started, uh, we got a contract suite set up for a company. That's how we got into contract management and what it was really amazing and how that that changed was that we were able to send up the company's templates in a more balanced way right out of right out of the gate to where we were looking out so that was on the GC side but also as we went downstream you know what does it look like to have a balanced template and also going in with a template knowing that we can change it to address our pain points. And so, and also too, having control over your templates, we were able to turn our subcontract agreements into simplified tables. And so it was easy to use. So all these things that, all these pain points that I had experienced wow. trying to use the contract, we were able, um, for that, that specific company, we were able to take those lessons learned and put them in the template. But then also as we kept going, knowing that we needed to have a feedback loop so that we could continuously uh, improve those templates to address the business as it grew or as we experienced pain. And so I think the lessons learned from that are I've applied as you know, I set up, I've set up templates or systems. And so we can make the lives a little bit better downstream and also kind of start our own, putting our own foot forward of, of balancing the contracts a little bit more and, and trying to change the industry that way. Nice. This actually segues right to my next segment, which is where I want to understand how do you see technology? And I saw that you moved to Document Crunch and we are going to talk a little bit about AI that gets me excited. So let's talk about that. Like how are, and you are like a living proof, like you're doing it, you're dealing with it every day. So how do you see tech, especially AI, transforming the way we deal with contracts today? I think that is, I, I love this because I'm so passionate. I have become so passionate in the last few months, especially um, as I see what real use cases that um, pain points that users of contracts can, what we can solve through software. And, you know, for us specifically, it's AI, but, you know, any software that solves pain points for people whether it's contracts or not, there's, there's, and I think the, the nice thing about AI, uh, especially when it's been integrated uh, wisely with the industry is that it's not there, you know, I've seen, you know, I'm worried it's going to take my job or I'm worried it's, you know, there's a lot of great applications where it really just speeds up your processes. So you aren't spending time, you're reducing your time around those things that traditionally may have taken a long time. Um, you know, for example, one of the cool things that I love about um, 
one of the, what we do now, we just released a chat feature, which is amazing because you can have your contract and you can ask questions in real time. So when previously, if somebody found out you could read a contract, they'd loop you into their workflow because they'd want you to answer their contract questions. And now they can go directly to the contract, ask the question the way they want to ask it, like, when is the payout due? Or uh, I have to give a notice, tell me, you know, because there's a, a flood on my job site, what do I need to do now? So you can ask those questions that you would typically ask someone who's really knowledgeable about contracts in your company. And you can get a real answer straight from the document and you don't have to wait for them to respond to an email. You don't have to, uh, there's, there's no waiting and there's a low barrier to entry to getting that information. So that's my favorite application because it's contract centered, but I think they're the whole goal of software and using AI is just a one way to do that. The using software should be solving your specific problems and your pain points and making those process, you know, there's always a little bit of a ramp up as you learn, but you know, it's just one way of speeding up processes that traditionally took a long time and, and making everything faster and easier for people who are just trying to build, just trying to do the work of construction and that's what I think is really great about these tools and technologies that are coming into construction. That's so cool. Uh, are you honing some points that I wanted to highlight? The first one was actually AI is not going to take jobs. Uh, AI is only going to, it's like, you know, when the uh, internet boom happened, right? Of course, some jobs die, but the new jobs are created, right? Mm -hmm. It's only really going to help you be more productive, yeah. help you think take off the redundant load from your yes. day to day and actually help you focus on strategic goals, right? Mm -hmm. So that's how AI is going to empower industries in future. And as you said, like you can focus on building, right? You find yes. contracts boring. Guess what? You don't need to worry about it. You have smart tools to take care of your questions on the go, right? Mm -hmm. You don't have to sit and wait and, you know, be stuck in that, you know, constant follow-up loop with your customers, your, uh, you know, subs, whoever you're writing contracts for. So uh, that's, that's super awesome. Like, that's a great point that you bring in. I'm excited uh, that you're talking about some of the cool chat features and how this whole process is being automated and actually becoming more intelligent, right? Yes. That's you know, and, and with the whole goal, I mean, at least, you know, tools, these, there are so many um, new technologies coming out specifically for the construction market. And, you know, I only see a little bit of the world of tech and construction, but what I do see is how implemented and looped into processes, how it can speed so many areas of uh, traditionally slow, that are traditionally slow up. And so you can focus on the things that you really uh, got, probably got into construction for. Yep. No, absolutely. Um, I love it. And I can't wait to see more of your shares on LinkedIn talking more about this. AI is definitely coming and coming big, right? It's only going to change the way we work. It's not going to take any jobs away. It's probably going to create more jobs that's needed. Uh, and we'll see how it shapes. Uh, any other trends, Megan, that you are seeing these days, uh, especially related to your space? I mean, yes, tech, AI, what else are you seeing? Like how um, I was more keen on knowing, like, how do you see your peers? Like, you know, I know you and I are super passionate about it, but not really everyone is, right? And so how do you manage the change around it? How do you really get people to use it? Like, it's right there. You could use it. Try it out. Yes. Well, I mean, there's a couple of things that you, you just talked about, too. You know, there's the slow adoption, but also... Uh, it's there is a, a technology wave kind of coming towards our industry that maybe uh, we haven't experienced as fully before, and so I think there is there is a um, 
an aspect of slow adoption. And I, I will be the first to admit, you know, I, I was a little hesitant about, you know, what I, I want to read my contract from front to back. Like, you know, I, I need to do that. But I think the idea is just going back to growth mindset, you know, it may not be the right tool, but it is coming and it is the way, um, the way the world's going to start working. And so, you know, uh, who, who knows, maybe the adoption in other areas of your life will kind of um, lower the barrier to trying it in construction. But something interesting I do, uh, I've seen a few posts about actually on LinkedIn, and I am going to butcher his name, and I feel terrible for that. His name is Bagarin. And he, um, I, I can't remember his last name, but he's been doing some really interesting posts on AI and construction. And one of the things that he has posted about twice now is technology companies, they have innovated a new way through technology of building. And something like, you know, they're not even trying to sell to contractors. They're just going and doing it the new way themselves. And I think he mentioned there was a roofer and then there was also, uh, I can't remember the other one off the top of my head. Mm -hmm. But what was interesting is that there, or maybe it was modular construction, I think. Mm -hmm. And they have not even bothered with selling to traditional construction companies. They're just doing it themselves. And so I'm really curious to see how this trend impacts construction because there's this one side of uh, an acquisition market that they buy construction companies that have good margins and then they put it put technology in that you know yep into their processes and then they so they can boost up the margins even more. Uh, because just by adding tech to their uh, to take time down on their regular processes. So there's that one side of, you know, acquisition seeing the value, but then there's this other part of construction coming up now that is just bypassing the traditional construction market completely and, and starting their own almost this almost tech built. So I'm interested to see how that, um, that shapes that, yeah, it almost seems to be clashing with the traditional way how we've always done things. And so I'm I'm really curious to see how that impacts our industry. That's cool. So great you mentioned a little bit about modular construction because that's something I'm super passionate about. But I am so uh, um, so ready to follow this person that you just shared about as he talks about AI. So all of you should uh, uh, a plug to that. Uh, but that pretty much brings us towards the end again. Thank you so much for being here, for sharing your insights, for sharing uh, some cool facts about uh, contracts in construction, how to work through it, what's important. And uh, if you are watching us on video, you might be seeing we are twinning in pink because we are recording <laughs> it on the Valentine's week, although this episode might come out later. Uh, but uh, belated happy Valentine's uh, Day month, whoever uh, is tuning in. I hope you had a good one. Um, and uh, as always, uh, I will continue bringing more leaders in construction on my show. This keeps me going. Your support, your feedback keeps me going. Uh, and super thanks to Audrey and Offside Dirt for sponsoring this show. And I'll uh, that keeps me going and bringing more guests uh, to you as we continue to grow and learn together. Thank you all. I hope you have a great day, month, uh, and I will see you all next month with another great leader uh, with tons of insights unlocked for you. Till then, thank you. Have a great one. Bye. Thank you.